Welcome back to this special edition of Squawk Box. We are live in Omaha, Nebraska with Warren Buffett, the chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. And Warren, we've talked about a lot of issues this morning, but we haven't touched on some of the new investments that came in. And I'm thinking specifically of Kinder Morgan. Uh, Berkshire now, as of the fourth quarter, had a uh, $396 million stake. Yeah. It was, I was a little surprised by that because when we've talked about oil investments in the past, you haven't been that enthralled with most of them overall. Mm -hmm. This is a, a pipeline investment. Yeah, well, I was a little surprised too. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, we have two fellows each who each manage about $9 billion for us. Uh, I look at their holdings once a month, but I, they don't have to check with me about, uh, they don't at all. Uh, so they, they run two portfolios. They get paid based on how those portfolios behave. Uh, I've never told them to buy anything or, or sell anything. Uh, so that was the decision of, of one of those two. And was you, it Todd or Ted? Uh, well, I, I, I don't think I'll tell us which one is doing uh, what. But they, uh, I think when you see a position of that size, it's probably theirs because uh, I'm not going to do anything in all likelihood that doesn't involve, at least potentially involve, a few billion. Uh, so uh, now that could have been the start of something, and I was going to buy more, but that's not the case okay. in, in, with Kinder Morgan. You were involved, though, in the f additional purchases of Phillips 66. Right. So yeah. at this point, no, you had a 14.2 percent. Many billions. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that you like about Phillips 66? Well, I, I, I won't get in the business of touting stocks, but I, you know, it, I. Obviously, I like the business, or I wouldn't have bought it, but I, I, I'm not recommending anything to anybody else. <laughs> okay. um, when you it is important. Some people say that is a reflection of how I feel about oil. Yeah, oil refining is much different than oil production. They're, they're two entirely different businesses. I mean, they have, they have a little connection in a certain way, but, but a decision on oil refining or a decision on going in the oil production business, they're night and day. Because? Well, because in, in the oil production business, it all depends on the price of oil, whether you're going to make money in the future. And in the refining business, it all depends on what's called the crack spread, which is just basically what it costs you to buy oil and sell it. And you can make just as much money or more with $30 oil as with $100 oil, but not if you're a producer. So you like the crack spread right now? Well, no, it's not so good right now. <laughs> it, it was better last year. Uh, what really helps in the oil refining business is when somebody shuts down. For example, the Whiting, Indiana refinery, which is a big one, shut down last year for a while, and, and that helps the spread. Because, uh, it's, oil refining generally operates in the 90 plus percent of capacity operation. So anytime somebody gets knocked out, either there's planned outages, but then there's also unexpected outages. And if you're, if you're in the oil refining business, you're hoping that the utilization is very up there in the high 90s. <laughs> There, there's been a battle in the energy field um, in which Bloomberg Businessweek put you on the cover with Elon Musk, the two oh. of you kind of battling and fighting over yeah. this. He, him with Solar City and you with NV Energy, Nevada right. Energy, um, saying that this is a, a situation where uh, billionaires are fighting over this, and w it generated a lot of questions from viewers. I'll, I'll give you one that came up from Maricela Giordano says, why is your company, Nevada Energy, trying so hard to stop people from converting to solar power in Las Vegas? Another similar question that came from Mike Wood says, Berkshire's been a leader in solar investment. Why are you preventing or deterring net metering in Nevada? You yeah, want to we're, explain that we're to We're the leading. Oh, we don't have a problem with net meters. And we're the leading in renewables in the country uh, among regulated utilities. The only thing is we do not want our million plus customers that do not have solar to be buying solar at ten and a half cents when we can turn it out for them at four and a half cents or buy it at four and a half cents. So we do not want the non-solar customers, of whom there are over a million, to be subsidizing the 17,000 solar customers. Now, solar customers are subsidized through the federal government, as we are with our wind and solar operations ourselves. The reason that society believes in subsidizing solar and wind is because of damages to society that may result over decades from carbon emissions. And, and uh, society has an interest in it. And subsidized by the federal government, society is, in effect, paying for it. I mean, the people who benefit the whole country. Uh, in Nevada, they had an arrangement 
for a very limited number of people, and the Public Utility Commission decides this, they had an arrangement where the utility had to pay way above market for solar produced by these 17,000 homes. And that, for instance, if I have solar electricity that I'm producing, it's yeah. more than I need, I can sell it back to you, the At utility. At 10 and a half cents, when we could buy someplace else for four and a half cents, or make it ourselves for four and a half cents. And that cost the million plus customers a, a price. And the Public Utility Commission, there's three utility commissioners, the Public Utility Commission decided that was unfair to the million plus people who didn't have solar. And they said it's fine to sell it back, but sell it back at what it can be bought, sell it back at market price.